Hello everyone, how you doing? Monday, Black Storytime reading, 5 o'clock here. So glad to have you all with us as we continue to celebrate our writers and our illustrators, African American. Alrighty, so I don't, I want to continue to encourage you guys that we are going to be having the pop-up mall, uh, 4th Street Live, and it will be on June the 19th from 12 to 6 o'clock. So I'm hoping to see you all there. Have another book. Wonderful book. Are you all ready? I am too. Let's go. The book is Bippity Bop Barbara Shop. It is it is written by it is written by Natasha Tarpley and it is illustrated by E. B. Lewis. E. B. Lewis. Early Saturday morning, Daddy comes to wake me with one secret knock. Bippity bee bop bop. Bippity bee bop bop. You up, little man? Daddy pokes his head into my room. I'm up, I say excitedly, and jump out of bed. I can hardly wait. I'm going to get my first haircut at the barber shop today. Mama and my sister Kenya are still asleep. Daddy and I have the house all to ourselves. <laughs> Quickly, Daddy and I dressed in matching blue jeans and gym shoes, then head outside. We turned onto Main Street and stopped at Jack's Sweet Shop. Daddy orders a gooey cinnamon roll and black coffee and a glazed donut and chocolate milk for me. Miles is getting his first haircut at the barber shop today, Daddy tells Mr. J. Is that so, Mr. J asks, leaning over the counter. I nod, yes. This calls for a celebration. Mr. J pours chocolate milk into a tall cup. Be brave, little man, he says, as he hand it to me. We ate as we walked up ahead. I see the green and yellow awning and the white letters on the window that says Seymour's Barber Shop. Next to the door is a short white barber pole. It has red stripes, which curls and swirls around it like strange fish swimming in a sea of white. And there's Mr. Seymour in the window with his wild gray hair dusting off his big shiny chair. Mr. Seymour has been daddy's barber since daddy was a kid, like me. Now, he'll be my barber too. Inside the shop is crowded. Daddy stops to whisper something to Mr. Seymour, and then we walk to the back of the shop to find a seat. Hey there, Charlies. Hey there, little man. What's going on? People call out as we pass. First haircut. One of the men asks me. I nod yes. Nothing to it, he says. Just gotta be brave. All these people are telling me to be brave, but I don't know exactly what that means. What does brave mean, Daddy? I asked. It's just, it just means that you're not afraid, Daddy says. When we sit down, I practice being brave.
As Daddy and I wait our turn, we watch two men playing checkers. Slap! One of the men slammed his checkers on the board. King me, he shouts with his arms raised high. Another group of men is clustered around the television at the back of the shop watching a basketball game. Come on, man, shoot the ball. What you're waiting for? Pass it, pass it. Foul, that was a foul. The ref must be blind. Wee! that boy can fly. One man cheers when his favorite player finally makes a basket. Jazz music, loud voices, and laughter blends with the buzzing of clippers and soft swishing, swishing whispers of scissors skimming loose hair from a freshly cut head. I looked at the men in the roll of chairs in front of me. I can see their faces in the long mirror that runs along the entire wall of the shop. The man in Mr. Seymour's chair is getting his head shaved. Take it all off, he says. A patch of sunlight gleams right on top of his bald head. Another man has long, thick dreadlocks. He's getting a shave with a straight razor. And when he leans all the way back in the chair, his locks almost touch the floor. The next man is getting his hair cut low all around. The clippers go back and forth, dripping and gliding across his head, making smooth waves that ripples through his hair. In the last chair, there's a kid, a little older than me, getting his curl, his curly afro trim, just a little off the sides, he says, but none of the styles I see looks, look like me. After a while, Mr. Seymour points towards Daddy and me and calls my name. I looked at Daddy and then at C Mr. Seymour and then at Daddy again. You go first, Miles, he said, and pats me on the shoulders. Be brave, little man. I can hear my heart beat in my ears and my knees feel wobbly, but I stand up and walk over to the chair. Mr. Seymour helps me up. The chair is so high, and then he drapes a big white cape over me to catch the loose hairs. What style would you like for your first haircut, little man? Mr. Seymour asks. I shrug my shoulders. I don't know. Mr. Seymour shows me a poster hanging on the wall with pictures of all kinds of different styles, but I still don't see any that looks like me. I take one more look around the shop, and when I see Daddy, I know right away which style I want. Cut low on top of, cut low on top and shave clean all around, just like his. I whispered to Mr. Seymour, and he goes to work.
Mr. Seymour takes out his pick. He picks my hair until it is fluffy and stands upright. Then with his scissors, he began to cut my hair, just like mama used to do at home. But when he finished with the pick and scissors, I hear him turn on the clippers. I hear him turn the clippers on. My heart starts beating fast again. Will the clippers hurt? What if Mr. Seymour accidentally cut off my ear? The loud buzzing noise is coming closer. Then I feel a tickle creeping up the back of my neck. I get so scared. I duck down as low as I can go in the chair. And I throw the cape over my head. I peek out from under the cape when Mr. Seymour turns the clippers off. Daddy is squinching beside me is squatting beside me. I try to be brave, but I don't know how. I say it with tears in my eyes. So I close my eyes and think about giants. Oh. You know, I was scared when I got my first haircut, Daddy says, and wiped my tears away. You wear? I say with my eyes open wide, Daddy nods. But I'll tell you a trick. Pretend that you're a giant so tall your head touches the sky and the buzzing of the clippers is just the sound of airplanes zooming by or maybe you're a superhero saving the earth from a swarm of killer bees try it i promise you won't be frightened anymore so i close my eyes and think about giants and my favorite superheroes. But I can't picture any of them getting a haircut. Then I remember watching Daddy get his haircut. The way he sat up tall and closed his eyes halfway, like he didn't have a care in the world. I think about how brave Daddy is, and I get brave too. When Mr. Seymour turns the clippers back on, I imagine that I have Daddy's long legs and wide shoulders. I sit up straight like Daddy, though I still squeeze the arms of the chair tightly. And when Mr. Seymour is, is thought that there is brand new staring back from the mirror, Mr. Seymour rubbed a dab of a sweet smelling blue aftershave on my face and the back of my neck. It feels like a cool breeze. And then he dips a brush in powder and gently sweep it over my head and neck. Daddy takes his seat in Mr. Seymour's chair. And when Mr. Seymour asks him how he wants his hair, Daddy says that he wants a haircut just like mine. Daddy wants to look like me. When Mr. Seymour is finished, Daddy and I smile at each other in the mirror. You sure were, you sure were not twins, 
You sure we're not twins? Daddy asks, raising one eyebrow. On the way out, some of the other men in the shop hold their hands up to me for high fives. Looking sharp, man, they say. Guess I can't call you little man anymore, Miles. You're one of the big boys now, Mr. Seymour says and shakes my hand. See you next time. I turn 